You're listening to the Multiverse Fancast, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. All right, then. On with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Multiverse Fancast. Don't forget, you can take us on the go with Podbean, Stitcher, Apple Podcast. Spotify, and any other listening station devices that you may use. You can also check out our content on the website, themisfitfaction.com, where you can find articles written by Rob, some pictures of us, um, and hopefully within the next couple weeks or so, some more exciting things coming to the website. We're going to get started off, and with me today, I have Paul. Paul, how are you doing? I'm good, Ronnie. What's up, man? I'm doing good. You know, it's been a while, I feel like, since... I've recorded an episode. It's been two weeks. Even, I was going to say, it's, been it's only been like one, one episode. One, yeah. You missed one. <laughs> but it feels like forever. Um, but excited to record. Uh, we're going back to kind of like our schedule that we were doing where we were kind of doing like a movie and then a TV, like a show, TV show. And then, uh, and then so this. to pull back the curtain a little, uh, originally we were supposed to do Titans this week because the yeah. season finale aired. But uh, we decided to uh, rearrange our schedule just a little bit. Uh, we're going to explain why at some point. I don't know if we're going to say it in this episode, but we do have a, a big project that we're working on. Yes. Um, if you're uh, fans on our Facebook page, you'll, you may notice a severe lack of content <laughs> this week. Uh, that was on me because uh, logistically we have a lot of things going on and a lot of good things going on yes. and a lot of new things going on. But um, So it kind of took uh, – precedent for us to make sure that it was all set to go for your holiday season hopefully <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but today what we're going to be doing is we're going to do another one of our character studies um last one we did was on robin um so we are going not back. the not the bird not the bird yes not the, not bird. the bird uh so we're going to go back to the marvel side and we're doing character study on the hulk or from, the incredible hulk from wrestling yes Hulkamania coming at you? Yeah, brother. Yeah, that's probably all we can do from uh, from Hulk Hogan because he's also kind of racist. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Moving on. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to be talking about the Hulk. We'll do a little background. I was going to say background check on him. <laughs> a little background check on the Hulk. <laughs> he's not a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. A little background check. We're going to talk about, you know, all the different um, movies and TV shows that he's been a part of and everything. Da, na, na, na. <laughs> That's the sad walking away theme. I'm, I'm try- <laughs> My goal is to make Ronnie crack up because uh, when he hosts, he gets very serious. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, then. <laughs> um, but why don't we get things kicked off? And we'll- Paul, you want to give us a little brief backstory of the Hulk? He's green. Uh, is he, though? Greenish. So Sometimes he looks yellow. Yeah. Or red. What? Or gray. So, yes, the uh, the Hulk is a fictional character and superhero, and he first appeared in Marvel Comics, created by Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby, in The Incredible Hulk of uh, May 1962. Now, in his first uh, basic iterations, he was actually colored gray because it was easier for the inking process for comic books for him to actually be gray. The Hulk, as he originally appeared, was very different than the current iteration. Yes. Uh, more of a Dr. Jekyll, uh, Mr. Hyde kind of setup where he would turn into the Hulk at nighttime. Uh, same basic concept. Uh, Bruce Banner's a scientist working on gamma radiation, and he's created by uh, a gamma explosion. Uh, in the comics, he was pushing a, a young man. I bel- oh, It's going to drive me crazy what his name was. But um, he uh, pushes Rick Jones out of a testing yep. field, and he gets hit with the blast of gamma radiation. And... Uh, Eventually, he wakes up, and he seems like he's totally okay, but later that night, he transforms into the Gray Hulk. Now, that's a very basic synopsis. It's been done thousands of times in different uh, movies, TV shows. I think today, we're going to be talking mostly about – we'll talk mostly the MCU because that's where he's uh, most Mm -hmm. well-known. We'll talk the TV show because it's got the greatest theme song of all time and (laughs) some of the best lines of all time and uh, some of his other appearances. But for the most part, we're going to be sticking a little bit to the MCU side because he's got a lot more appearances in the MCU. So what do you think? Uh, The Hulk, first thoughts. Uh, First thoughts on the Hulk. um, So very, very interesting character. Um, like, Like you said, it's kind of inspired from Frankenstein meets... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, you know, obviously didn't watch T 
TV show. Um, you know, because I wasn't alive for him. Most, Most of it. Of it. <laughs> it did have some of the first crossovers in, in Marvel history yes. with uh, Daredevil and Thor. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, didn't really watch that. Um, you know, we, we talked off air. Eric Bana is the forgotten guy. Um, <laughs> and then and then kind of did a good job with Norton. Um, and then, you know, now we have Mark Ruffalo as it. Um but I just like the development that we've seen in the character over time because he doesn't really talk a lot when we were first introduced to him. Um, and now he actually has some sort of like a – what do you call it? Personality. Uh, personality. Well, I'm going to argue amazing. that with you when we talk uh, MCU Hulk because oh, I, yeah? I am not happy with where the Hulk ended up. I'm not either, but at least he's got some sort of personality. <laughs> a little too. bit. Just, just a slight personality at this point. Other than just – <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, for those of you guys who don't know, the Hulk has had a lot of different variations of said Hulk. Um, mm-hmm. They really wanted to dive into the idea that Bruce Banner and the Hulk are two separate beings, and the Hulk is kind of that the inner desire, the the inner uh, monster, the the one that's like they they've gone through a lot of weird psychological phases with the Hulk, where like he's like the psychological manifestation of Bruce Banner's fear, and he's like trying to protect Bruce Banner and all this. And then there are times where they hate each other and nobody wants to talk to each other. Yeah. Um, we've also had different versions of the Hulk. We have the Gray Hulk or Joe Fix-It. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Savage Hulk, which is uh, one of the more powerful versions of Hulk. Yeah. There, there's so many. The Devil Hulk, the Green Scar, which is uh, the Sakar version. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doc Green. Oh, man, so many. So yeah. many. Gravage Hulk, Dark Hulk, Professor. Merged Hulk, Professor Hulk. Uh, in the MCU, new, uh, MCU now, he is Smart Hulk. That's what they say in the closed captions. Um, now, the Hulk, what he is famous for is two different things. Bruce Banner is considered one of the greatest scientists on, on Earth. Yes. Genius level intellect. Um, Norman Osborn from the comics said, he, said he at once that he was one of the, I think, the fourth most intelligent person on Earth. I'm terrified to know who the other three are. Yeah, right. Imagine if you were a superhero and you were just kind of like a normal person. Like, yeah, right. Just normal intelligence. That, that I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then um, the Hulk is the most is considered one of, if not the most powerful beings physically on Earth. Yes. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, the Hulk's powers are very simple. The angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. Um, typically, it's depicted that the Hulk can possess unlimited strength, that no matter what, he's always going to get stronger. Mm-hmm. They kind of – I don't want to say they nerfed him in the MCU, but in the MCU, he's very strong, but yes. he's not the strongest, which sucks Yeah, because he should be. He should be. But anyway. He's the strongest Avenger. So, strongest. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> now, so do you want to talk about the Hulk and other media first? Or you want to – I mean that's really all the comic book stuff. Because you and I – you know, I'm not a big Hulk fan in the comics. Yeah. I, I know of him. I've, I've read – you know, obviously World War Hulk and uh, Planet Hulk are very famous Hulk storylines. Yeah. But uh, I think we would have a lot more fun talking about him in the MCU and some of his movies. Yes. Question I, I mark? Agree. Um but before we even hit movies, if we had some TV shows. <laughs> yes, we did. Come on, we got to talk about it. What? Who? <laughs> you don't even like that. It's Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> He's fighting Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> so I listened to a podcast um, uh, from a, a network called uh, Rain Man Digital, and they do mm. a, a supernatural podcast that I love. And they met Lou Ferrigno, and all they do is viciously make fun of how terrible he is at conventions and stuff like that. Yeah, where he's like, you know, here's nine. I need ninety dollars for half an autograph, like just one of those ridiculous stars at this really? point. But then you see him in a movie like I Love You, Man, where he just seems so nice. Yeah, right. I put him in a sleeper hold. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you actually watch uh, the Incredible Hulk? I did not. Um, so I was born in 89, uh, which means I could not watch it. It was already over for seven years. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, again, I didn't really watch too many of the shows, to be honest with you. Not even, you know, The Incredible Hulk that came out, was it the mid, mid-90s? The, the cartoon show? The car- yeah, yeah. Yeah, You know, um, again, I feel like with most people, people only know him through the mcu yeah you know so for those of you guys who don't know the incredible hulk tv show uh it aired from november 4th of 1977 to may 12th of 1982 and it starred 
Uh, Lou Ferrigno, Bill Bixby, and Jack Colvin. And uh, the opening narration was by Ted Cassidy. Do you want me to read the opening narration? Do it. You won't. Dr. David Banner, physician, scientist, searching for a way to tap into the hidden strengths that all humans have. Then an accidental overdose of gamma radiation alters his body chemistry. And now, when David Banner grows angry or outraged, a startling metamorphosis occurs. The creature is driven by rage and pursued by an investigative report- reporter. 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 Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> the creature is wanted for a murder he didn't commit. David Banner is believed to be dead, and he must let the world think that he is dead until he can find a way to control the raging spirit that dwells inside him. <laughs> oh, I need to lay down. Oh, yeah. So it aired for five seasons, mm-hmm. uh, 10 episodes, 22 episodes, 23, 18, and 7. And then it had, uh, I think it had two movies to try and uh, wrap up the story because it does not, I think it ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, I remember watching the syndication and I would watch it on like Sci-Fi Channel and, uh, you know, they, they, they still show it every once in a while. It's, I don't think you can find really? it. Uh, anywhere in America right now on the TV shows because the Hulk is one of those characters that's owned by I believe Universal so when you watch the Incredible Hulk movie you actually see the Universal logo Um, very similar to uh, Spider-Man where the MCU is allowed to use him and but they can't make a solo movie because that's Universal very strange yeah very strange um I love this show. It, it's fantastic. It's one of those first examples of, of a superhero show that does really well. I mean, to do five seasons. Yeah. You know, 80 plus uh, episodes, five TV movies. Excuse me. Wow. wow. There you go. Um, and it, obviously, it still has a very big cultural impact. You know, mm-hmm. you watch The Incredible Hulk or you even you watch uh, Eric Banis Hulk and, he, you know, they do the lines like the, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yeah. Um, in The Incredible Hulk, the, uh, the reporter, reporter that's filming him is named Jack McGee, yeah. like stuff like that. So, in, in all honesty, it's still a, a very influential part of the Hulk. And obviously, Lou Ferrigno still does a lot of voicing of the Hulk. Yeah. You know, mostly growls and roars and yep. stuff like that. And then they'll combine him with, like, Mark Ruffalo's voice because yeah. that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> but um, any any thought, any other thoughts on uh, the Incredible Hulk TV show before we take a commercial break? I, I, I do like their um, their makeup. <laughs> The green makeup. Um, so let's just paint them green. I, I I will argue though that the transformation, like they did the best they can with the effects that they could. Oh, yeah. Because you know, obviously now the Hulk is completely CGI, and um, yeah. the technology has come a really far away. Oh, yeah. uh, it's mean, still sometimes a little jarring. We're, but... we're talking what late seventies, early eighties. So yeah. obviously you're not having any cgi back then no no <laughs> well even uh even in the incredible hulk movie they still do this the transformations where you only see parts of it like you see shirts ripping you yeah. see that, like as an homage to it because obviously they can it we haven't really seen bruce banner transform into the hulk until the first avengers movie where he does it flawlessly yeah um and we're gonna talk about that too because a, a lot of people some people have issue with the uh i'm always angry scene and I, i'm yeah. here i'm here to defend it <laughs> But um, sun's getting real low. Hey, big guy. <laughs> we'll talk about that too, because obviously Thor Ragnarok, he is the star of it. I'm not. Oh, yeah. I'm, you can't even deny it. Uh, any other thoughts on the Incredible Hulk TV show? No, I think that's gonna do it for the TV show. You want to do a commercial break? Let's do a quick commercial break. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Ray's Energy Drinks from Rep Sports. Whether you're trying to crush your afternoon workout or just need a little extra pick-me-up, Ray's Energy is just the boost that you're going to need. So if you go to repsports.com and any product that you order, enter the code MISFIT89 at checkout to receive 15% off. Anything that you guys buy from that store helps our network grow, and we fully, fully appreciate everything you guys do. That's MISFIT89 at checkout, repsports.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to jump right into things. So we just hit on some TV show stuff. There's not too much to do it with the Hulk, but we're going to go right into 2003's Hulk movie with Mr. Eric Bana. What a creative name. Hulk. Right? Who not the thunk? Hulk. Not a Hulk. Yeah, right? That guy. Not the incredible... Oh, wait. That's next. That's next. That's next. Um, that's next. Yeah, so we had the Hulk, which was directed by was Peter David. Ang Lee. Ang Lee. Yeah. Why am I thinking? Oh, Peter, he helped write it, the story. <laughs> there you line. go. All That's right. what it was. I was like, wait a second. Um, yeah, so we had the 2003 movie 
Hulk. Very original title, like we said. Um, you had Eric Bana playing... I almost said Mark Ruffalo. He's playing... <laughs> Wow. Um, Good one. He, All right. Was, well done. Was, uh, well done. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> he was played Bruce Banner. Oh, my God. I think I might be done. Um, we haven't even started yet. we I got know, a long right? day. Um, initial thoughts on the movie. It sucked. No. Uh, well, all right, scratch that. So it it has gar- garnered a little bit of a of a following since mm-hmm. now. Um, Ang Lee was was super hot at the time. This was like the the peak of Ang Lee's uh, directing uh, career. Yeah. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, it came out in two thousand three, June of two thousand three, and it did make money. It, the budget was one hundred thirty seven million. It made two hundred and fifty or forty five million. Mm-hmm. So it it made money. It didn't you know blow people away like. They thought it was, and the reviews were a little mixed. Yeah. It had a very unique aesthetic to it, where it was almost Ang Lee wanted to make it like a comic book almost. So it's a lot of comic yeah. book panels. Um, the cast is fantastic. Uh, Eric Bana, I do enjoy Eric Bana. Um, he was also apparently in the uh, up for the role of Ghost Rider, but he lost out to Nicolas Cage, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, you got Jennifer Connelly as Betty Ross. She she does well in it. Sam Elliott. I love Sam Elliott. But he's, yeah, he's not he's, maybe not in the movie, but in general as yeah. an actor, he was him. he took the role without reading the script just because yeah. he was excited to work with Ang Lee. Uh, you have Josh Lucas as Glenn Talbot, uh, Nick Nolte as David Banner. God, Nick, it was terrible what they did with him. Uh, Cara Buono as Edith Banner, uh, Celia Weston as Mrs. Krenzler, and uh, Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno is in it, and also. Um, <laughs> Stanley, obviously. Yeah. Um, so this movie is very much within the vein of the comics, um, but they, they take some big liberties. Mm-hmm. And also there's a severe lack of action sequences. This was during that phase where they didn't know how to do superhero action. Yeah. You, I mean, you have you have this, you have um, uh, Superman Returns, like where you have these characters, these famous comic book characters not even throwing punches. Yeah. Like the most powerful comic book what, characters. What else came out around them? Fantastic Four? Uh, probably right? no, not Fantastic Force thing Fantastic <laughs> <laughs> Forces um, so yeah like this was a time where you, you have these legendary superheroes that, yeah. that, that don't throw a, he doesn't Bruce Banner the, the Hulk doesn't throw a punch in this I was gonna say Bruce Banner never throws a punch <laughs> yeah well so they do a little bit of, of liberties with Bruce Banner, he yeah. his father had experimented on himself, which caused part of why. I mean, there's there's some good stuff in this, like yeah. the the desert scene is really good, the tank scene, but there's also like some weird creative stuff. Like, do we really need to focus on this blooming flower for four minutes? Yeah, it it was weird. It, I feel like it wasn't a superhero movie. I was watching. I was watching more of a sci fi movie, mm-hmm. which I. Kind of, I, I get, I understand because obviously it's science fiction, you know, gamma radiation and all that kind of stuff, and you're exposed and turning into this monster, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I think looking back on it, I think it's just the fact that we're, we've been so privileged with what we have seen, and that was what 18 years ago. This movie came out, something like that. Yeah. Um, Math is hard. Well, it's 18, but it depends on when it came out in 2003. 18 to 19 years old. Math is hard. <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know. It's just it's just weird that... Uh, one, one thing I was looking at, too, is... Uh, Edward Norton was supposed to play in this movie. Oh, God, that's so funny. He, he was supposed to do it, um, but he we're, turned we're, it down. We're going to talk about that, too. Yeah. So one of my biggest things is, you know, in the comics, David Banner is actually Brian Banner. That's Bruce's father. Yeah. Uh, his abuse towards his son is a big contributing factor to, to mm-hmm. the transformation of the Hulk and, and the protecting of Bruce. Like it's uh, like a, a, like an invisible friend that he created. Uh, Brian does return as a, a version of the Hulk called the Guilt Hulk, mm-hmm. which is uh, – I believe it's just in his head. But um, I'm really – like this movie was okay, but – it, it was just it was very very strange and yeah. it's weird because the Hulk's one of those characters that they haven't that they they got right and then they started to lose so do you want to do, do are we doing Star City ratings on this movie? we can do a you, Star want, you want to do a Star City yeah. rating on, on Hulk? on Hulk yeah uh, two a two a two okay 
it, uh-huh. it's saved by some some decent acting and some but like then there's the scene with the giant poodle yeah i i'm i'm debating on going lower than that Oof, rough yeah um but you know I, i'll i'll agree with a two i'll stick with the two um you know like you said like there are a couple scenes in the movie that kind of grab your attention and everything you know obviously we're talking again 18 19 years ago cgi isn't what it is now so i think with what they did back then i think they did a great job with how he looked Mm -hmm. as the hulk um they, uh, there's a great shot of him when he's transforming back into Bruce Banner that yeah. that still holds up pretty well. Um, the scene of them in the house when mm-hmm. you know he he throws uh, Talbot that was a, that was yes. a fun shot. You know, there, there's again there there's a couple good things with the movie. Um, so so yeah, I'd say I'd give this a two. All right, yeah. that, that's fair. Now let's move on to one of my favorite MCU <laughs> movies, which is uh, Hot Take. The Incredible Hulk. Yes. Uh, you so, go first. Uh, me? Are you sure? Okay. Well, you're hosting. Uh, oh, you're I right. just got really excited. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have 2008's um, The Incredible Hulk. Uh, in this, you had Edward Norton uh, playing Bruce Banner, not Mark Ruffalo. Uh, you had Liv Tyler as Betty Ross. Um, Lou Ferrigno was the Hulk in this. Um, Tim Roth was Abomination. We had Tim Blake Nelson as Samuel Stearns. Uh, Ty Burrell as Leonard Sampson. William Hurt as Thunderbolt or Thaddeus Ross. Um, you also got Tony Stark. Making an uncredited mm-hmm. cameo. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, again, that this... A very big improvement on what we saw five years prior. Um, my only gripe with this movie is Edward Norton. Um, I, I just don't see him as it. He doesn't, to me, he doesn't have the look of a scientist. So here, here's the thing about this movie. This movie was such a unique beast because it, it was right off the heels of Iron Man. Yeah. Um, to the point where the reason they do... The, they do the post credit scene in the movie because people miss the one in Iron Man. Because no one knew back then about post mid or post credit scenes. So that's, that's why that's why that scene with Tony Stark happens because it was supposed to be after the credits. Mm-hmm. But because <laughs> because everybody missed the Nick Fury one, yeah. they decided to do that instead. So Edward Norton came onto this project, and Edward Norton is famous, notorious even in Hollywood for how much involvement he wants to have when he's a starring role yeah. um, in the script and the development and all that. So, unfortunately, it's just... You can tell this movie is is a little bit of a mess. Yes. Um, if you watch the original trailers, the opening trailer, or the trailer starts with a scene that's not even in the movie, movie. Yeah. Of, of him and uh, Ty Burrell's character, Samuel... Uh, not Samuel Stearns. Uh, Oh, man. Leonard Sampson Sampson. talking. Because Leonard Sampson's a big character in the comics. And it's Ty Burrell. This is right before Modern Family exploded. So this movie went through rewrites. And Edward Norton was was notoriously difficult because he wanted to explore more of the psychological stuff with the Hulk. Yes. Whereas Iron Man had just come out. And Iron Man got a little bit of flack for the lack of, again, the lack of action Mm -hmm. scenes. You know, really, he only has one big fight scene besides the desert stuff. And that's yeah. uh, against Iron Monger at the very end. So I, I get what, you know, with the Hulk, you also want, you know, in the words of our friend Timmy, more, more smashing. smashing. Yeah. So I mean, every, my thing is, too, is with that, is everyone knows the phrase Hulk smash, which he, I still love when he says it in this. Yeah. It's, it, you know, it's coming yep. and it's cheesy, but when he says it, it's awesome. Yeah. Cause it, it, I feel like even like those people that aren't big superhero comic book fans and everything like that you get little kids whenever they're destroying something Mm -hmm. you i feel like a lot of people i know i do it i mean but again that's me um (laughs) you know if i'm like smashing something or something like that i'm like oh smash you know like you know when you get the poor fiance yeah right (laughs) 
Oh, okay. just let it ride. Family friendly. Uh, just let it ride. She's not listening. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, like when you get the bags of ice and you oh, have yeah. to like break it up to put it in a cooler. Every time I like slam it, because that's what I do. You know. Also, if you see a bag of fertilizer, you just have to tap it and yeah. you're like, "This is good stuff." Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yep, that's the good stuff. That's right the here. good stuff right there. <laughs> but like, I, I throw it down on the ground, and that's all I think of in saying my head is just Hulk smash. So I, I just love when when he says it. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that. Now, I also really enjoy uh, they they have Betty Ross in this. They never mention her again. Yeah, she is never mentioned again, and they have some great scenes together. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they so eventually she, he, they do the Scarlet, the Black Widow romance, which I still think is the, the, yeah. one of the weirdest things that they ever decided to do. And it was I'm glad they kiboshed it. Ish. Yeah, but uh, they brought back because they also brought they bring back eventually uh, William Hurt as Thunderbolt yes. Ross. I think in uh, what was it Civil War was his first appearance, and then he's in yeah. uh, one or two others. So it, it's really strange how th- this movie set up a lot that never. Uh, came through. Yep. You got. They just brought back Abomination. He's mm-hmm. been mentioned before. Uh, Marvel's Agents of Shield mentioned him a few times. Um, which, Sam, what was that? No, I was gonna say. Which I think Abomination didn't look terrible. He didn't look terrible, but like all they had, to, they just added the the fins, the fins to his head, and the, you yeah. know he looked much better. But I, I thought it was great how they brought him back for uh, just a few. He supposedly he's going to be in the new show also. Yeah. Um, because this movie turned into kind of the. The not talked about stepchild somewhere, and yeah. Ronnie and I are both stepchildren, so we can say that. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, like this movie was really kind of just shelved and not really addressed until much more recently. Like yeah. they they addressed it on What If, and mm-hmm. you know, obviously with Blonsky coming back and stuff like that, they're they're trying to reinvolve it, but yeah. it's it's very strange. You know, we had Tim Blake Nelson as uh, Samuel Stearns, who becomes the leader in the comics, and you mm-hmm. see that transformation start to happen, and we haven't heard anything about him. No. You know, Leonard Sampson, uh, Abomination until just now. I think the only really janky uh, effects in this are when they try and give him the fake abs. Yeah. And, like, it just it looks very jarring. Yep. Yeah. But uh, I, I really do enjoy this movie. It has some great superhero moments it has the, the great hero moments and the fight in harlem is at the end is a lot of fun mm-hmm. um it, it does annoy me that when thunderbolt ross was you know basically yelling at the avengers like you guys did all this damage and damage i wanted somebody to be like yeah um harlem was your fault yeah right yeah <laughs> and of course they do uh the homage in that battle where yes. he puts he takes the uh what's it called the the cop car okay. And he makes it into the boxing yep. gloves from the video game. I was like, yes, all right. This movie had a lot of homage. Yes, um, I sure, love definitely. I love the op- uh, the opening bit where he because this movie also it just assumes you you kind of have an idea of the Hulk. You mm-hmm. kind of you know the story a little bit, and they don't bore you with the first half being like the setup to him becoming the Hulk. He's yes. already the Hulk. He's on the run. He's doing this. I like that, yep. and I feel like we've lost that part of the Hulk in the MCU. So. This movie really, I and I love the the first scene where the Hulk first transforms, mm-hmm. and you hear him whisper, "Leave me alone." Like it's yeah. just a very cool moment. So I I, I regret that they didn't continue in this because this this movie is very different than the rest of the MCU movies. Oh yeah, like it, it has its humor in it. Like when they're they're about to be physically mm-hmm. intimate, and he's got the heart yeah. rate monitor, and he's like, "Ah, uh, crap." Yeah, yeah, can't do that. Yeah, no. so. I, I I would give this movie. I don't know. You want to do Star City ratings because we got to keep moving on. Yeah, of course. I'm going to give this movie a three and a half. Okay. I to be honest with you, I thought you were going to go higher. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I I can't go higher because we never got to see the payoff to all this. Yeah. That, that's what that's what kind of kills me. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I'm I'm going to go with a three. Uh, still above but, average. Oh yeah. Um. I feel like the Hulk looked worse in this than he did in 2003. That's fair. That's um, fair. Well, it was darker, very dark. But he, yeah. like, I liked. They wanted to make him look very just ripped, yes. like big and ripped. So I, I enjoyed. Like he was very muscular. Like the, yeah. But it was really hard seeing him with another, like a human person. Yeah. Like th- those scenes were rough. Yeah. Um, I, I will say though the fight at Culver University is fantastic. Yes, uh, with the with the soldiers trying to to stop, stop him, him, and he's like, "Yeah, no, no, not me." Thank God Hank Pym didn't uh, <laughs> get there in time. Yeah, right. But anyway, um, but yeah, I 
again, the, the Hulk didn't look as good as he did in 2003, which is sad to say because this is five years later. You, you would think there would be some improvement because you have more technology. Was not, again, not a big fan of Edward Norton in this movie at all. I think if they would have put, if they got Eric Banner back or anybody, maybe not anybody else, but somebody else, I could put this movie up a little bit higher. It's just, I'm not the biggest fan of Edward Norton. That's fair. You know? I mean, he's gone because uh, him and uh, Don G- or, uh, Terrence Howard are starting yeah. the anti Marvel fan club. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So moving along, uh, we have kind of, I guess, the MCU Hulk now. Yeah. So the you Hulk know. has not gotten his own movie since, which is unfortunate. Yeah, that's uh, that's logistical stuff, though. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. I mean, but so we have um, Mark Ruffalo mm-hmm. now portraying him, um, meaning Bruce Banner and the Hulk um, in the MCU. He's been in multiple films now. Yeah, um, I mean, what we have all the Avengers. So films. Avengers, he cameos in Iron Man three. He's in Avengers: Age of Ultron. Then we don't see him again until Thor Ragnarok, and then Avengers: Endgame and Shang Chi. So about six movies. Civil. He's not in Civil no, he's War not at all. In Civil War, yeah. They mention he's mentioned. He's mentioned, but they don't. Yeah. So let we'll do the Iron Man three one because it's just a cameo. Basically, we find out at the end of Iron Man three that Tony Stark's been narrating the whole movie to Bruce Banner, who's asleep listening, and he's like, "I'm not that kind of doctor." Yeah. So. Let's start with the Avengers because uh, arguably he steals the show in the Avengers. He was very well done. He was very popular, mm-hmm. and obviously, and people were excited to see Mark Ruffalo instead. Yes. So in the Avengers, he's doing work in what was it, Calcutta? Yes. Yeah, Calcutta, and uh, he's doing just basically like medical help. Like he's, yeah. he's a doctor, and he gets approached by Natasha Romanoff, who rec- who recruits him, not the Hulk recruits Bruce Banner to help them find the Tesseract because the Tesseract is releasing mostly gamma radiation. Mm -hmm. So I do love how they make him a little bit more squirrely when he's on the the helicarrier in the very beginning. He's like, like people are moving. He's like very like, um, very just like timid almost. Yep. And him and Steve Rogers have one of the best intros to any characters where, um, you know, Steve goes up and he shakes his hand. He's like, I've heard a lot about you. And he's like, oh yeah, what have you heard? And he's like, or something along those lines is like, you know, only the things that matter to me. Yeah. And like they, they, he establishes, he's like, I'm here to talk about you, not not the Hulk, because that's what everybody kind of wants. wants. They want the, they they want want the, the Hulk. Hulk. So obviously Bruce Banner helps them. And after the attack of uh, Hawkeye and the rest of the Loki controlled agents, mm-hmm. he has his first transformation. What do you think of that first scene with the Hulk in Avengers? I think it's some of the best we've seen done with but you know the transformation scene with him um you know again that was the that was what the first time we ever saw him transform that was the that was the first mark ruffalo hulk transformation right um you know i i think it's so well done i mark ruffalo to me and i think most if not all people will agree is the best bruce banner hulk portrayal i i can stand behind that i just i don't think that the way that they've done the hulk from endgame on has been what yeah. what it should be um i do really enjoy uh the fight scene with him and thor that's mm-hmm. a really fun scene i really wish he had lifted the hammer just by pure strength alone yeah. but um you know him and thor go at it and you know the, the scene of him on the plane when he when he attacks the, the jet that's attacking yep. them and then it explodes he's like <laughs> It, it, it always makes me laugh. Um, and then obviously the whole story of him, you know, he, the whole movie he's saying, you know, I have a secret as to how I control myself. Yeah. And at the end, you know, it's the big payoff. Like, that's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Yeah. A, a lot of people don't get that. And the idea is Bruce Banner is constantly holding the Hulk back. Yes. He's he's keeping himself at a certain calmness that the Hulk doesn't get out. We see him finally get out in the the helicarrier when he gets attacked because that's just pure stress. But in that scene where because everybody's like, "Well, now we can just transform into the Hulk and keep him control and all that." No, he basically just let the Hulk out. Yes. Like turned off all, any control he might have had to keep that monster inside and let him run wild. Yeah. Which which is why I 
to be honest with you, the Hulk slash Bruce Banner is the strongest Avenger. Yeah. You know, because he's got to con- he's got to control two people, mm-hmm. you know, while everyone else is, you know, their own self all the time. You know, he's got to be able to keep the strength to hold the Hulk in. I mean, now he doesn't because now he's just the Hulk. But yeah. And of course, we get the, the famous Loki scene. So we, when we saw that in theaters for the first time, everybody was so busy cheering and clapping that yeah. nobody heard what Hulk said as he walked away. Yeah. And we were all like, no! no! Puny God. Puny God. Because this Hulk does not... He's not as chatty. Yeah. So the Hulk joins the Avengers and we'll fast forward. We passed Iron Man 3. He goes off with Tony Stark, mm-hmm. works in his lab. Uh, him and Tony build the, uh, uh, the, the Hulkbuster armor just in case. Yep. And... Then we move on to Avengers Age of Ultron, where we get a little bit more development, where we kind of see what he does as, you know, he doesn't always want to transform into the Hulk. It is a, it is a process for him. He has like a, a decompressing afterwards to do. Yeah. And we see that him and Natasha Romanoff are building this relationship where she's able to coax him into transforming back into Bruce. And they even have a code for it, code green, yeah. when they when they need the Hulk to. So I guess they don't always have the Hulk just moving out. He's yeah. part of the team, but they do understand that he's not always the best yeah. option. The sun goes Until down. we have sun. Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, and she manages to get into his head and turn him into more feral Hulk, yeah. like a wild Hulk. Now there was talk about making him the Gray Hulk in that scene, but they mm-hmm. thought audiences would get confused. Yes. Which I can understand. I can understand that if he was just suddenly gray, like, wh- why is he gray? Yeah. Like, wh- what did she do to him? So, we do have the most, probably probably one of the best action scenes in an Avengers movie, which mm-hmm. is Iron Man versus the Hulk. I remember yes. seeing that trailer and we were, we were everybody lost their minds yes. seeing the Hulkbuster armor. I, I loved it. I and oh, yeah. It's still fun. Like, when he spits out his tooth and he just <laughs> stares at Tony and, he's, yeah. and Tony's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it, is, it is a great yeah. scene. Yeah, it, it. I think it might be one of the best scenes we've seen in the MCU. Oh yeah, it, 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 definitely top five fight yeah. scenes. Yeah. You know, de- definitely for sure. Again, the, the pro- that's the thing with like that movie is mm-hmm. like it's a bad movie. Uh, uh, Age of Ultron. Yeah, I like Age of Ultron. Do you? Yeah, I, I think it's a not, not like a bad movie. It is not the strongest Avengers movie. No. I will, I will give you that because it's also their setup movie. Yeah. Um, at the end of it, though, the Hulk does decide that he would be better off leaving yes. and takes the Quinjet and disappears, and he leaves leaves the Earth. Bye. Yep. And then we don't see him for... Till arguably one of the years. best Marvel movie of all time. Yes. So, Off for those of you guys who don't know, in the comics, uh, there's a group called the Illuminati. The Illuminati yeah. consists of representatives, quote-unquote, from different factions of humanity. Doctor Strange representing the magical. I think Black Panther. I'm going to get corrected if I'm wrong, so... Feel free to just do it nicely. Multiverse Fancast on Facebook.com. Yeah. But um, I think uh, Professor X, Black Bolt, and I want to say there's one, maybe Namor or somebody like that. But basically, they decide that the Hulk is too dangerous to leave on Earth. So they send, they put him in a rocket and they send him. They wanted to send him to a, an isolated planet, but the Hulk freaks out, causes the rocket to cla- crash land on Sakaar, mm-hmm. where he becomes a gladiator and you know take frees the planet. But then his ship explodes, killing his wife and I maybe they're no i just think just his wife Mm -hmm. um because he does get married and have a kid and then he comes back for world war hulk where he is hulk bust or a planet breaker hulk or world breaker hulk most powerful version of hulk illuminati yeah dr strange all right black bolt all right professor charles xavier reed richards oh reed richards namor namor all right so i was was close and iron man i was close and iron man so the, they wanted to adapt this story, but they had trouble making just a single Hulk movie. So instead, they decided to put it into Thor Ragnarok, which was genius. Yes. Arguably, Thor Ragnarok is one of the best MCU movies of, of the oh, entire yeah. series. And I love, 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 love the Hulk in it. Yes. I, I, I agree. Uh, well, again, what, one of the best parts of that movie is Loki's Revenge. That's how it feels. <laughs> I to me like that that scene right there. That from from the start of that scene to the end of that scene is just pure comedic joy, goals. bliss, and comedic. From the second Thor's like, yeah. Oh yeah, 
He's a friend from work. <laughs> hey, big oh, guy. Okay. <laughs> and now at this point, we've also seen that the Hulk, so basically Bruce Banner's been the Hulk for almost two years. Yes. And the Hulk is starting to develop his intelligence and personality. He's still like a brute, you know, walking around naked. Yeah. Um, and throwing things at Thor. You bad, bad friend. friend. <laughs> like he's still using, you know, poor pronunciation and grammar. But he's, you want Bruce, not me. <laughs> oh, I love all that. <laughs> I love how Thor goes back and back forth. Back. He's like, I prefer I you. <laughs> Switches back and forth between the two of them. But this this was my favorite iteration of Bruce Banner in the Hulk because you get to see Bruce Banner. He's still timid. He's still squirrely. He's still yeah. like, I don't want to do this. And then you have the Hulk, which is like, this is the Hulk. The, you know, mm-hmm. he's a warrior. He's a fighter. He he loves the glory of battle. Yeah. They're two complete polar opposites, finally. Now, I do like the ends where he's like, I don't know if I can transform. And he's like, yeah. I'm going to show you who I am. Yeah. Jumps out of the plane. <laughs> he just <laughs> lands. And I Arguably, like, Bruce Banner dies. Yeah. But they do establish that the, the Hulk can bring back Bruce Banner. Mm-hmm. Like, when, you know, they talk about Bruce Banner trying to kill himself, which they do yeah. show in an alternate opening to uh, The Incredible Hulk. Mm-hmm. But, um... Yeah, it, it's still it's funny. It's great. I think the Hulk works better with a comedic act uh, director sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Now we get to Ugh. Infinity War and Endgame. Now, arguably, the opening shot of him in Infinity War fighting Thanos is awesome. Yes. Like, you know, Loki finally gets his. We have a Hulk, and the Hulk drops down. And he starts pummeling Thanos. Yep. But then Thanos rocks his world. Yeah. Which... Because well, Thanos knows how to fight too. Yeah. And he's just as strong, if not stronger, than the Hulk. And the Hulk's never fought somebody like that. Like that, no. Because um, even Thor, even though Thor's a warrior, he's still also a brute. Yeah. He, like, Thanos, like, hits him in the throat, and then a kidney shot. Like, he, he, like, almost boxing him. Yeah. And, you know, he gets his world <laughs> rock. Now, I like what they do where the Hulk doesn't come out, but I don't think they explained it properly. Yeah. So, in... The directors have said that the Hulk wasn't coming out because he was scared. It's because he was tired of fighting Bruce Banner's battles. Yes. And he was, like, the idea was to get Bruce Banner, like he says at the end, screw you, you big green asshole. I'll do it myself. Um, Apparently, at that point, he was supposed to transform and then be the smart Hulk, you know, the combination of the two of them. Mm -hmm. But they they scrapped it and then they moved it to Infinity, or to Endgame. Endgame. Yeah. I... I don't like what they did with him in Endgame. It's it's obvious. It's funny. It's yeah. very funny. Like the first time we saw it, we laughed and we were like, "These are confusing times." Yeah. Um, they should have made him a. They should have made him the Gray Hulk. We're gonna start there. They should have just made him the Gray Hulk and had him because basically what they did was they erased the Hulk. Yeah. We fell in love with him in Thor Ragnarok. This new version of the Hulk that's talking, that's communicating, that's like Friend Day. Like yeah. we're, we're laughing. He's gone. Yeah. That version of the Hulk is gone, and it's literally Bruce Banner's mind and the Hulk's body. Yep. It's it's sad. Yeah. Also, because the Hulk does not get his moment to shine in Endgame. He do, he's Bruce Banner. Yeah, no. I, see, I, I agree with you. But if they were to make it the Gray Hulk, I think then it would have been, like you said, it would have been okay. Because for people that know comic books, kind of know a little bit about the history of the Hulk and everything, we would understand, oh, Grey Hulk, Professor Hulk. Well, I think... He's, th- he's a combination. I think they could have just explained it. Just yeah. been like, like, he's just Grey Hulk and, and, you know, same thing. Like, they do explain it. They're like, you know, I did this. So, 18 months yeah. in the game and that. Had they have done it where... It was this new version of the Hulk where he's got his own distinct personality, like a nice com- – like the Gray Hulk has the intelligence of Bruce Banner, but he's a little bit more like – almost like a thug. Yeah. Like he works as like a mob enforcer called Joe Fix-It. Yeah. So they could have done this version of the Hulk, especially if they were – because you can tell that they're also backtracking, and we're mm-hmm. going to talk about that in a second. So they got this version of the Hulk. They could have made its own character. Yeah, but instead they—it's almost like it's just Mark Ruffalo being Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah. The Hulk throws a bench in this movie, and he hits one. We only see him hit one Chitauri. Obviously, he does get his great moment with the snap. Yeah, and you know him bringing everybody back because people tend to forget about that. They yeah. always think about Iron Man doing his snap, but I'm like, you do realize that Bruce Banner brought back the world. Yeah, right. So I don't know. I I really I don't like it. Yeah. Again, with more explanation, I would have been okay with it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I, I'm again, what, just like you, I'm not okay with it because of the fact that I really love the Hulk in Ragnarok. Yeah. And, and that's that, what's upsetting about it. I would have loved to have seen him be that way in Infinity War Endgame. Mm-hmm. And then he goes into the Great Hulk afterwards. Because then he realizes, you know what? I do need Bruce. So you know what? Let's compromise and we'll go 50-50 on this body. I'll have the body. You have the brains. Yeah. You know, and stuff. I, I think that would have been the better way to go. Um, or even like towards the end of Endgame or something like that I is think, when he switches. Well, even like when when Natasha dies and and he you know he throws the bench, yeah, like his big action scene. Um, that should have been the moment where you start to see that come back. And also, yeah. he never gets his payback on Thanos. I would have loved yeah. to see this quote unquote perfect version of the Hulk go up against Thanos and you know show him a thing or two. Yeah, where where was he holding his arm? Because apparently his arm is permanently damaged from that. And I was like, oh, okay. But but see, my thing is, how? Because the, the, been... the Hulk has regeneration, so why don't you just cut his arm off? And it just grows right back. And, and, and he grows a new one back. Because he's not as powerful as he is in the comics. A lot of these characters are not nearly as powerful as they are in the comics. I would make him. I know you would. <laughs> but uh, that's our last appearance of the Hulk until Shang-Chi, where he appears. Spoiler alert for uh, Shang-Chi, if you guys haven't seen it yet. Um... He appears in the post credit scene talking to Shang-Chi and Wong and uh, Captain Marvel, and he's human again. He's wearing a sling. Uh, the scarring's gone, yep. but he's human. They're going to need to explain that um, yeah. soon because that, that's an issue for me because he's back to normal. Like, without... You know what it is. What is that? It's a multiverse. I don't think it's a multiverse. <laughs> um, I think, in all honesty, and I hate to say it, it's for budgetary reasons for... Uh, the new she hulk show because he's going to be in it and i don't think they can they don't want to spend all that money on making Mm -hmm. him the hulk the entire time which is weird because you would think that they have it down to like oh science Science. at this point but what do i know i'm just uh i'm just a handsome podcaster yeah right i'm not even i'm I'm curious to i'm I'm curious to know what what love is what love is yeah no um i know what love is i have a fiance uh, I'm wait, she, to she's not listening me. to this i don't have to be cute like that no nah, all right <laughs> um gets an angry text message right away yeah right? Ow. Ow. producer melanie told her <laughs> <laughs> um now i lost track of what i was gonna say mm-hmm. yeah Gosh, no, i'll give you a second it. i'll give you a second it won't come to me it's not gonna come to you at all <laughs> all right can, hold on can we pause and do a little play black play, play back bl- what's a play black <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah, we, you can tell that we're already having a long day. Oh, yeah. But um, my, my issue is, like I said, you know, they, they, they nerfed the Hulk, and then they now they're backtracking. And I, I'm curious to see what's going to be happening in the She-Hulk TV show. That's where I was going. Yeah, that's why I, I, I brought it back. <laughs> All right. Um, sh- there's not a whole lot of details about She-Hulk. For no. those of you guys who don't know, the character of She-Hulk is uh, – uh, what's her name in real life? This is, uh, Jennifer Walters. Uh, yeah. In the comics, she's the she's a lawyer, but she's also the cousin of uh, Bruce Banner. Mm-hmm. And in the comics, she needed a blood transfusion. And he was the only possible match. And when he did, he gave her very similar abilities. Yes. Um, she's not nearly as as strong as he is, but you know she's big, she's green, and <laughs> I don't know. That's that's all that's all we really have on this show at this point. And that yeah. it's going to be coming out, I think. Uh, 2022. Yeah. Ten, ten episodes, part of phase four. I was going to say, I don't think there's an actual uh, date yet. Well, filming began in mid-April of mm-hmm. this year, of 2021. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get some sort of trailer at some point. The problem is with shows like this, the the, the effects are yeah a lot. So he's going to be, meaning Mark Ruffalo is going to be in all episodes? I in don't... Every episode, I think. Uh, he's going to make an appearance, but they have not said how many episodes he's actually going to be in. It's showing. It says on IMDb. I don't trust IMDb. It says ten. Well, because they have some people as ten episodes, and then they also name some people with one episode too. I guess we'll see when we see. Yeah. Unfortunately, but uh, I uh, I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. I hope it's like an actual court. I really hope, if this is the time to bring back Charlie Cox as Daredevil. I know we we everybody yeah. wants it. 
and everybody's excited about it I, if it happens. I, but I, I think, think watching the two of them go together in a courtroom and then like deal with each other outside the courtroom would be yeah. a lot of that would be a great because they did that on the Incredible Hulk TV show with Matt yeah. Murdock. So I, I think that would be a really fun homage. Yeah. And in all honesty, you. You could just be like, he's another lawyer. Yeah. And he's a superhero. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap things up, favorite Hulk. Not Bruce Banner, favorite Hulk. What do you mean? Like, uh, what? Out of everything. Like, who, uh, who Thor, do you think? Thor Ragnarok Hulk. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. All right. Bruce Banner. Favorite Bruce Banner? <sighs> Avengers Edward. Uh, Avengers uh, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. That's my favorite. That's, I think that's the peak of. Bruce Banner, and I think Thor Ragnarok is the peak of the Hulk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd agree with both of those. Oh, you just asked me so you could agree with me. Yeah. No, I... Trying to stroke my ego. You know it. No, I, I feel like everyone would say Thor Ragnarok. I think it's... Hulk. It, I, I would give Bruce Banner and Thor Ragnarok a close second. Yeah. Um, And then uh, I would even argue Bruce Banner in... uh, What was it? Uh, In Infinity War. Except for the scene where the yeah. Hulkbuster armor opens and it's his floating right. head there, and I'm like, "Oh god, it's still so it's trillion dollars in effects." <laughs> yeah, right. there we are. Okay, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's gonna wrap us up for our discussion on the Hulk. Um, before we go, we do have our fan feedback friday which is something i was totally prepared to do right now and i'm not buying time because i'm never prepared to do this because obviously i was saying fan i got it. I got it. feedback friday <laughs> so th- this one was fun we got some good answers actually yes. uh so fan feedback friday was if you could throw a halloween party in any superhero location where would it be and we like i said we got some fun ones mm-hmm. um let's see Sorry. Now, somebody actually commented on it as I was reading that, so That's now I just funny. I just had to reload it. All right. Let's see. We got Sakar, which uh, ironically that's where Ooh. we're talking about. Uh Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another Sakar, Stark Tower, The Bat Cave, Xavier School for the Gifted, Asgard. Oh, this one wins. Themyscira. <laughs> I won't say why. But uh, uh yeah, that uh, I w- you know some other ones I think uh, Gotham City, Metropolis, like yeah. some of the big cities were there. So, yeah, that that was a fun one. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was funny cuz I I put Sakar and I was I was actually thinking of uh obviously that, but my backup there there's so many places that I could think of Wakanda. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. You know? Like I, I'm just trying to think of like, all right, what superhero would I like to drink with? Fantastic Four Tower, or the Baxter Building, as it's called. Yeah, that'd right? be fun. The Avengers, the compound. Daily, the Daily Bugle with J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> I want pictures of Spider Man, <laughs> sir. We're drinking. <laughs> Can it wait? Can it wait later? <laughs> uh, but that is going to wrap us up for today. Yes, uh, Paul. Yes. How can everyone get in touch with us and listen to us? So, obviously, the easiest way is on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audible, Google Podcasts. Basically, anywhere you get a podcast, you can probably find our show. You can also find us on Facebook, the Multiverse Fancast, and the Misfit Faction. And if you're looking for something like YouTube, we have the Misfit Faction Media Network. We also have a Twitter, Misfit Faction, and an Instagram the misfit faction all of those uh, things are constantly updated with new episodes new content uh fun things boring things annoying things basically anything and think things any things you want <laughs> so uh the more we uh get some audience interaction on there the better we have a lot of fun with fan feedback friday we want to do more stuff like that we want to do more stuff with the youtube uh including some animation stuff which i am really working on <laughs> and it is time consuming and expensive so we'll see but uh we do also have a very big announcement coming up in the next couple of weeks we're not sure when we're going to announce it but uh it is probably the biggest endeavor we've had to go through yes. on on our show for those of you guys who don't know the multiverse fan cast has been around for years and we it started as a hobby and it started as something that was very inconsistent and very yes. poor production but now it's just inconsistent with somewhat okay production well no i think it we started out consistent <laughs> oh god too consistent too consistent too consistent and then we and then with poor production <laughs> <laughs> with that one snowball <laughs> microphone that i have over there and and then and then we stopped and then we came back there's a reason our first episode is our highest uh downloaded one yeah. and the rest <laughs> yeah what eight 86 downloads the first 86, week i think yeah. so yeah 
So, um, speaking of which, the more downloads we get, the the better production we get. Because I know a lot of people listen on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, but uh, anywhere you guys listen to podcasts, if you can uh, leave reviews, leave uh, downloads, it really helps out the show, especially considering what we have plans. Because it is it is, it is big, big and an endeavor, and oh my lanta, I still have so much work to do. Yep. <laughs> But that's going to wrap us up for today. I'm Ronnie. And I'm Paul. And we'll be back in a flash.